yourself, please. Command Performance USA, the greatest entertainers in America, as requested by you, the fighting men of the United States Armed Forces throughout the world. Command Performance! Presented this week and every week, till it's over, over there. It's command performance time again. Time to dig in and answer your request by presenting the stars you want to hear. I guess we've had almost a hundred letters requesting the appearance of a certain Hollywood personality. We're going to read just one of those letters. It's from a corporal in the United States Marine Corps somewhere in the South Pacific who writes... Would you please call up my kid sister and tell her I'd like to hear her voice? Well, fella, here she is. Your kid sister and the sweetheart of just about everybody back here at home, Miss Shirley Temple. Thank you, Mr. Paul Douglas, and a great big hello to my brother Sonny and all the other fighting nephews of Uncle Sam. <laughs> I hardly know where to begin, because... Tonight's command performance is really sprinkled with stars. Hmm, let me see. Starlight, star bright, first star I see tonight. Don's her Sunday best regalia for a soldier in Australia. His command is answered now as Martha Tilton takes the bow. Mother dear, when you go, mail this letter to Joe for me. He's far across the sea, he's far away from me. I hope that he remembers how to say no. And this is what I wrote, my precious Joe. Listen here, Joseph, don't sit under the apple tree with anyone else but me. Anyone else but me. Anyone else but me. No, no, no. Don't sit under the apple tree with anyone else but me. Till you come marching home. Don't go walking down lover's lane with anyone else but me. Anyone else but me. Anyone else but me. No, no, no. Don't go walking down lover's lane with anyone else with me till you come marching home. I just got word from a gal who heard from a gal in Waikiki. The fella she met just loves to pet and it fits you to a T. So don't sit under the apple tree with anyone else but me till you come marching home. The boys around town have got me down. They won't stop bothering me. While you're busy slapping japs, I'm busy slapping chaps. So don't forget that the girl you left behind has priority when you come marching home. You're on your own where there is no phone and I can't keep tab on you. Fair to me, and I'll guarantee there is one thing that I'll do. I won't sit under the apple tree with anyone else but you till you come marching Now, for a Red Cross nurse in the Canal Zone, Gordon Jenkins and the orchestra play Blue Skies. Thank you. 
Now, here's a letter from way up north in Iceland, signed by Lieutenant M.A.G. Dear Command Performance, I'm very proud to be a pilot in the best air force in the world. I'm also pretty proud of a little bundle of mischief back home in Georgia. You know, she'd be right here beside me for a moment if you'd put on that famous star with the same nickname as my kid. And I do mean Baby Snooks. Your wish is our command, Lieutenant. Here she is, Miss Fanny Bryce and her famous characterization of Baby Snooks with Hanley, Daddy Stafford, and Mr. Frank Nelson. <laughs> And uh, Snooks and Daddy on the golf course, where Snooks has insisted upon being present despite Daddy's protest. So let's look over on the first tee and sort of see what's cooking. Move back a little, Snooks. Why? If you don't move, I won't be able to swing my club. Excuse me. Oh, yes? Have you seen a ball? No. We just walked on the tee. Oh, okay. The nerve of that guy. Yeah. Look at me as though I'd picked up his ball. <laughs> Maybe he's seen you do it, Daddy. <laughs> did you see me pick up a ball? Uh-huh. You did not. I took this ball out of my bag. <laughs> oh, Daddy. Well, it isn't his anyway. It came from the other direction. And you mind your own business. If a fellow's too cheap to hire a caddy, he deserves to lose his ball. Daddy, Daddy. <laughs> because I don't need one. Well, I'm tired from carrying this bag. You haven't started yet. Oh, I'll carry it myself. Put it down. Look at all the people waiting, Daddy. I see them. I'm going to start right now. What are you doing? I'm putting the ball on the tee. Is that tea? Yes. Hmm. Looks like dirt. It is dirt. This tea isn't the same as the tea you drink. Why? Because one is a beverage and the other is ground. This tea is ground. Hmm, I thought coffee was ground. <laughs> coffee is ground. But this is a different tea and a different ground. Does that answer your question? I didn't ask you nothing. Well, don't. Hurry up and hit the ball. I haven't got all day, brother. Take your time, brother. <laughs> is he your brother, Daddy? He's not my brother. I wouldn't have him for a second cousin. Never mind those wise cracks, fella. Just drive off and keep moving. Okay, okay. Broken down public courses. Hit the ball, Dad. All right, just you keep quiet. All right. Back slow, head down. Daddy! What is it? Where are you going to hit it to? To that thing waving down there. What thing? The flag. That flag indicates the position of the green. Why? Because that's where the hole is. Wherever you see a flag, there's a hole. Why don't they fix it? <laughs> fix what? The hole in the flag. There isn't any hole in the flag. The green has a hole in it. Why? Oh, so I can crawl in and pull it over my head. <laughs> <laughs> oh, stop that yelling. <laughs> Will you let me hit this ball? Where are you going to hit it to? I... I told you, to the green. What for? Because that's where the hole is. What hole? The first hole. Now move back. Well, why don't you hit it to the second hole? Because this is the first tee, and you must hit the ball to the corresponding hole. Where is it? Where that flag is waving. That's the hole. What hole? The first hole. And that's where I'm going to hit it. Where? The first hole! <laughs> See that kid up and throw her into a trap. You stop meddling in my affairs, mister, or there'll be plenty of trouble. Listen, fella, you've been on this tee for 20 minutes. Now, why don't you be nice and let me play through? Oh, all right. Get out of the way, Snooks. Why? I'm letting this man go through. Thanks. I'll be out of your way in a second. Wait! <laughs> he really hit it, didn't he, Daddy? <laughs> Just a bunk. Yeah? Wait till I get a sock at it. I'll show you. Let me see you do it. Okay, get out of the way while I tee up again. I'll get out of the way. Now, don't make a sound. I'll make a sound. You just watch where the ball goes. All right, Daddy. Now, head down, right hand over, yeah. bring the club back slowly. Daddy! Oh! What is it now? Why don't you hit it to the 
hit the ball? That's what I'm trying to do. Will you hit it good? Good enough to qualify for the open, I guess. I'll probably shoot a par. Whose par are you going to shoot, Dad? I said par, not par. The object of the game is to shoot par. Mm. Why don't you shoot ma? Don't give me ideas. Huh? Nothing. Will you let me hit this ball? I didn't do nothing. Well, don't touch this town now. Here I go. Knees relaxed. Left shoulder down. Eye on the ball. You missed it, Daddy. Hmm. Tough course. <laughs> Good out. Head down, eye on the ball. Daddy! Now what is it? That man in the sandpit just missed the ball, too. That's fine. You know what he said? No, what did he say? Shall I leave out the bad words? Yes. And he didn't say nothing. <laughs> Watch me and keep quiet. Eye on the ball, firm grip. Right hand over, come back slowly. Right slowly. Well, go ahead and talk if you're going to. I'm going to talk, Daddy. Fine. Now, eye on the ball. <laughs> Did you hit it, Daddy? And how? <laughs> Carried 30 yards straight as an arrow. <laughs> Except it's a little out of bounds. Is that good? Oh, not bad. Come on, I don't want to lose that ball. So let me hit one, Daddy. In a minute. Let me find my ball. <laughs> I want to hit it. <laughs> I'll hear it. <laughs> Holy smoke. Nobody but a professional could make this shot to the green. I want to try it. All right, you little smart alley. <laughs> I'll bet you won't even move the ball an inch. I'll take this glove. Which way shall I hit it? You see that flag on the green? Yeah. Aim for that. <laughs> I'll keep your head down and your eye on no, the ball. No, don't and... tell me. I want to do it all by myself. Now, <laughs> go ahead. Come on, stand back. <laughs> well, I'll be... What a shot! Dead to the pin! No good? <laughs> Why, it's a miracle! Come on, let's see how close it is. <laughs> oh, boy! Snooks, look at this ball! Four inches from the cup. What do I have to do now, Daddy? Make it go in that little hole. <laughs> well, what are you yelling about? Why didn't you tell me when we went back there? Oh, come on, we're going home. Miss Bryce and Mr. Stafford. You know, I used to play parts like that myself. I outgrew them. <laughs> now, a letter from the city we mustn't mention in South America. If anybody is tops with this man's army, it's Dorothy L'Amour. Could you persuade her to sing a chorus of moonlight and shadows just for us? You bet we can, Sergeant J.W.C. And we'd have done it before, except that nobody in Hollywood has been traveling more miles to sell more defense bonds than the lovely lady I give you now, Miss Dorothy Moore. Thank you, Shirley. And hello there, Sergeant. I'm very happy to be here to answer your command. After all, you are in America's armed forces, the only army that we here at home will ever take orders from. Here is your song... And with it, my deepest respect for the greatest fighting men in the world. Never, never, never 
gentlemen answering a whole flock of requests, including one from a former baseball player and his friends at the U.S. Naval Station in Puerto Rico. Here they are with their famous baseball sketch, Abbott and Costello. Hey, 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 Oh, boy, oh, boy. All right, now, don't get Are you excited. the manager of this baseball team? Yes. Well, now that I'm down here for spring training, I would like to know some of the guys' names on the team, so when I meet them on the street or the ballpark, I'll be able to say, hello. Well, naturally, I'll introduce you to the boys, and a regular bunch of boys we have. But you know, strange as it may seem, they give these ball players nowadays very peculiar names. Funny names. Strange names, oh. nicknames, pet names. Well, tell me this fellow's name. Well, now, let's see. We have on the bags, we have who's on first, what's on second, I don't know's on third. That's what I want to find out. I'm saying who's on first, what's on second, I don't know's on third. Are you the manager? Yes. You know the guy's name? I should. Well, who's on first? Yes. I mean the fellow's name. Who? The guy on first. Who? The first baseman. Who? The guy on first. Who is on first? What are you asking me for? <laughs> I'm telling you, who is on first? I'm asking you who's on first. Yes. Well, go ahead and tell me. Who? The guy on first. Who is on first? Have you got a contract with the first baseman? Yes. Who signed the contract? Well, naturally, you wouldn't expect anyone else to sign it. But who? Yes. <laughs> so who signed it? Yes, absolutely. Look, when you, when you pay off the first baseman every month, who gets the money? Every dollar of it. <laughs> who gets it? Absolutely. Sometimes his wife comes down and gets it. Whose wife? Yes. <laughs> After all, he's entitled to it. Who is? Yes. All I'm trying to find out is what's the fellow's name on first base? Oh, no, wait a minute. What is on second base? Who's on second? Who's on first? One base at a time. <laughs> Don't change the players I'm around. not changing anybody. I'm only asking you what is the fellow's name on first base? No, wait a minute. What is on second I'm base? I'm not asking you who's on second. Who's on first? I don't know. He's on third. We're not talking about him. Now, wait a minute. How did I get on third base? You mentioned his name. If I mentioned a third baseman's name, who did I say is playing third? No, who's playing first? Never mind first. <laughs> I want to know what's the fellow's name on third base. No, what's on second? Who's on second? Who's on first? I don't know. He's on first. There I go. That's on first. <laughs> Well, if you stay on third base and don't go off it, what do you want me to do? I want to know who was playing third base. Why do you insist on putting who on third base? Now, who am I putting on third base? Yes, but we don't want him there. You don't want who there? No. So what's the fellow's name belongs there? No, what belongs on second? Who's on second? Who's on first? I don't know. Third, third base. base. <laughs> Look, Abbott, please, have you got an outfield? Naturally. The left fielder's name. Why? I don't know. I just thought I'd ask you. Well, I just thought I'd tell you. So tell me who's playing left field. No, who's playing first? Stay out of the infield! Oh, don't let your names out here. What's the left fielder's name? No, what's on second? I'm not asking you who's on second. Who's on first? I don't know. Third, Third base! base. <laughs> and the left fielder's name? Why? Because. Oh, he's center field. <laughs> Well, as I do. You've got to have a pitcher on a team. Naturally. The pitcher's name? Tomorrow. You don't want to tell me today? I'm telling you. Go ahead. Tomorrow. What time? What time what? What time tomorrow are you going to tell me who's pitching? Now, listen. Who is not pitching? Who I'll is... break your arm, you say, who's on first? Have it your own way. Go ahead. I want to know what's the pitcher's name. What's on second? I don't know. Third base. base. <laughs> you got a catcher? Certainly. The catcher's name. Today. Today, and tomorrow's pitch. Now you've got it. That's all we got is a couple of days well, on the I team. I can't help that. You know, I'm a catcher, too. I know that. Now I'll get behind the plate. I'll do some fancy catching. Tomorrow's pitching on my team, and the heavy hitter gets up. Yes. Home run, Paul Douglas. All right. What a home run hitter. So? Tomorrow throws the ball. 
Douglas bunts the ball. Now, when he bunts the ball, me being a good catcher, I want to throw the guy out of first base, so I pick up the ball and throw it to who? Now, that's the first thing you've said right. I don't even know what I'm talking about! <laughs> Well, that's all you have to do. Just to throw at the first base. So? Who's got it? Naturally. <laughs> Look, Abbott, who's got it? Naturally. Naturally. Excuse me. I pick up the ball. I throw it to naturally. No, he no, no, wait a minute, wait a minute. You throw the ball to first base. Then who gets it? Naturally. That's it. Pick up the ball and I throw it to natural. No, 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 wait a minute. I throw the ball to who? Natural. Now you ask me. You throw the ball to who? Natural. That's Same it. as you! <laughs> Look, now I throw the ball to who? Whoever it is drops the ball so the guy runs to second. Who picks up the ball and throws it to what? What throws to, I don't know. I don't know, throws it back to tomorrow. Triple play. Yes. Another guy gets up and it's a long fly ball to be called. Why? I don't know. He's on third, and I don't give a darn. What was that? I said, I don't give a darn. Oh, that's our shortstop. Oh, that's silly. to a requisition from a very cold climate for Technical Sergeant D.R.W. in the Engineer Corps up in Alaska. Six hits in the midst from the Bob Hope Show and begin the begin. When they begin the begin It brings back a sound of music so tender it brings back a night of tropical splendor. It brings back a memory evergreen. <laughs> Under the stars, hear that heavenly rhythm. And being with you seems too good to be true, dear. And even the palms seem to be swaying. When that tune clutches my heart And there we are Swearing to love forever And promising never Never more to part I'm so happy Moment divine Now who wouldn't be happy So when you begin Don't you stop Just keep right on playing now when I hear people curse the chance that was wasted I know what to blame, it's the being So don't let them begin the beginning Let the love that was lost and die remain and remember Let it sleep like the dead desire I only remember when they begin the begin Oh yes, let them be loud and Make them play Till the start of the night Not all the time, not love Will you whisper to me once more Darling, I love you And we suddenly know
Well, big brother, that just about fills up the package for tonight. A package of love, wrapped in devotion and sealed with a kiss. In your letters, many of you say, command performance is your thrill of the week. To us who appear here, it's a thrill of a lifetime. Keep writing to us, won't you? And when you think of us here at home, think of hands across the sea. And remember that behind those hands are lots and lots of arms. Arms of iron and steel. And we'll keep them rolling off the assembly lines until you've made the last of our enemies kneel down and say uncle to Uncle Sam. This is Shirley Temple saying good night and God bless you. Okay, man, there goes command performance number nine. We hope you liked it because you built it. Now, please write to command performance and care of the station to which you are listening and let us know whom and what you'd like to hear. You'll get it, brother, because as big as one little spangle of the 48 stars in that flag you're defending. And so, until we shortwave at you next time, hit them hard, buddy. Right down to the last rising son of a gun. <laughs>